little buddy. I'm back. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, using my tablet, man. A tablet. Like, I, on my, uh, on my other device, my phone, you can type, like, a 50 mile, 50 words a second, and it, it'll, like, respell every word if you hit the wrong button. It'll correct it instantly to the right word. And, uh, the tablet, it's like, every word I type is wrong. going Yeah, sure, sure. It's the truth, man. I blame the devices, modern technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm sorry, I should put this on camera. Mic drawing. Yeah, I was in a live stream with um Oh good. <clears throat> Always good to see you on the stream in the chat. Oh, sorry about that, yeah. Anyway, I was, <laughs> I was live streaming with, um, with, uh, Mike Miller, and this was just, this was a while ago, it was a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Um, he, talked, he was talking about layouts. He was saying that he does his layouts, uh, he does his layouts while he's actually on the actual paper, the final, like the Bristol, like just this Bristol paper, and, and uh, 
He likes to do it like that way because it's more spontaneous. And uh, I like to do them on a small scrap sheet of paper. And, um, but I told him, I said, when I do the layouts, I actually end up changing when I put the final paper. I don't just strictly stick to it. I change it sometimes, not always, but sometimes I do. Like in this case, so here's the page layout originally that I used. And you'll see like, I have him on the top panel shooting these guys in one panel. But I thought, be more interesting, more iconic to have that top panel broken up into like each guy getting shot is like individual, their individual panel and then one giant panel showing him shooting the gun and it would be more visually interesting layout wise and more impactful like he's kicking these guys out very quickly like one, two, three and then he's on to the next panel where he's talking to. I kept this pretty much the same, except I shuffled them like on top of each other, overlapping, and then the final money shot with the main character kind of showcasing his outfit and everything, and the people he saved, rescued. A little bit of humor here with the guy in the panel. He's the only guy who's left alive. <laughs> you see a little flaming boot there, one of his comrades. He's capturing everything put for posterity. Get it all in video. So yeah, I figured it'd just be a little more inner. I want, one thing I do like is like, um, I like different types of storytelling. I study like Japanese storytelling. I like uh, some American artist I really like is Frank Miller. And Frank Miller, he will do even though his art might be rough nowadays, I think I mentioned this before, but it's a little rough, maybe his drawings because of his health condition and everything. And But his layouts and his storytelling are just like, just, man. I mean, it's like, it's he does images that burn into your brain and uh, you don't forget it. I mean, there's guys out there who will do really pretty panels, really pretty drawings and I mean, anatomy, everything is just great, but it's just, you know, you forget about it after you part ways with the book. Frank Miller's imagery just, man, burns into your noggin, and it's just like, wow. Something about the real visceral, iconic. That's what I want to capture. That's my goal, I guess. So, when I looked at that layout after I did the initial one to kind of get what I want, the placement of people, and... I realized, you know, I did need to put a little bit more into this to make that, give you that feeling. So, let's see, sorry, I'm off camera drawing here again. So, I'm trying to, this guy, and I'm not into like graphic violence in my stuff, but if I draw a guy's head getting blown, it's because I'll just draw like, you know, silhouette. No gore, guts, no brains flying all over the place. I try to stay away from that because I don't want to distract from the story. I want to convey that visceral graphic kind of violence without showing it. Hey Rodwell Stevens, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. Hey Andy, cool. Good to see you back. So yeah, it's kind of like another influential, uh, what influenced me a lot too is the original Ninja Turtles comics. The Eastman Laird, and also the uh, Mirage Studio buddies like uh, Eric Talbot and and uh, Larson, and uh, yeah, I just they use like multiple little panels. They would use like one giant panel and little ones, and it just had an impact. It, the storytelling it was 
they really took advantage of the visual medium in comics. This is what I want to do because my storytelling, I'm influenced by film and cinematic stuff. This is something that you don't do in film, but I, it's it's an element of visual storytelling in comics that I want to take advantage of. Oh, it's been a long day, huh, Andy? Glad you can unwind now. Do some drawing, chatting. Oh yeah, you had those uh, books on too, the TMNT. Yeah, man, those books. I still have a bunch of ones. I, I bought a re bought some back issues. I shouldn't really say rebought because the first time I owned them, but I had some, uh, got some back issues, man. They're so cool. Black and white. Ah, uh, things not working. You mean like, uh, technical errors? Equipment? That stinks. Okay, let's see what it say. Are you going to be back in a little bit? I need to make some chili. Oh, some more gourmet cooking tonight, huh? Too? Some gourmet food. confidence monitor I didn't know there was such a thing was confidence way low or something that today Yeah, no. Yeah, man. Two indie comic book artists. And they were drawing those comics on their couch using a lap board. <laughs> Watching TV. 
drawing Ninja Turtle comics. That was like, it's a multi-billion dollar IP. Who would have thought? Just from black and white comics. Confidence monitor uh -huh. allows the speaker to see what's on the screen. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. So they can make sure they're all, everybody's seeing what they're seeing. Or they're seeing what everybody else is seeing, actually. Oh, you still have the uh, 25th anniversary Ninja Turtle book, huh? From uh, Mirage Studios, or um, it has to be from Mirage Studios, right? I mean, if it's 25, because what is it now in their 30s? Or is it IDW? These guys aren't faring too well. This gun is taking them, taking them apart. is not very easy on terrorists. No negotiations. Just get blown to pieces. And he has, I have to draw, like I said, I don't like drawing graphic violence. I'm trying to make this iconic with more like silhouettes and stuff so you get the idea. But he has some very powerful weapons that with tech that well I don't want to say too much. We'll find out in the story. But he does have tech that is beyond what we see today.
Or if that shaky desk, man, I gotta tighten this desk too. Look at this wobble. <sighs> That's irritating there. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, Eastman sold it, so it's probably from metal, uh, heavy metal comics. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Ramble 4. I can't do that type of violence, man. That was crazy. Here, in a second. I'm going to try to see if I can tighten this desk. the soundtrack yet. Here we go. Back. I'm back in action. There we go. That's still a little wobbly, but not too not like it was before. Yep, you're right. Predator. Earlier I played um, Commando, so now it's another Arnold movie. Yeah, Predator. My favorite. Predator. Is number one. There we go. Okay, so I got them kind of roughed in there. You see the explosion going boom, boom. So it's getting blown apart. I think the soundtrack was, uh, a good choice for uh, the violence happening in this <laughs> So I'm going to raise this up a little. There we go. Okay.
It's not going to be a really long stream tonight either because I want to start getting some normal sleeping hours in. I've been kind of doing the weird going to bed like at 3 in the morning, getting up at 9, 10. I want to kind of get up earlier. <clears throat> Let's see which pencil I feel like going with today. I'll stick with the uh Kudola. <clears throat> Since this is not the reveal section of this page, I, I gotta really, I wanna get the overall shape, everything down so like it's readable, because it's gonna be largely like a silhouette. So, I'm being kind of really strict with myself on this, but. Let the structure down. And then I usually flip it over and kind of look through it. I kind of see through it to see uh, how it looks in the light, like reverse image. Also use uh, mirrors and stuff too, which is usually the best way to do it. But
Hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can get a better view of everything. There we go. Are you gonna go to bed? All right, man. We'll see, you, Andy. Thanks for stopping in. Don't forget to like the video and uh, take it easy. I'll see you later. I'll start an earlier stream uh, next time. I kind of got sidetracked today and I wanted to start earlier. I'm going to actually still, I'm going to set a schedule on which days and what times I'm going to stream so that way people can just mark it down. As Right, it's kind of been random. I want to change that for this year. Let's see. Okay, good. Yeah, you need to get that gun reference. Pencils and pens. Let's see. Yeah, whoever's watching, if you could uh, ever be so kind as to like the video. If it's not too much trouble, feel free to share it. I know it's probably late where you are, so it might not make a big difference, but. Can, I think the link works so that even if people catch it the next day, they, it goes to the uh, uploaded saved video. I think uh, I stay abreast of what I'm doing next.
fun part is trying to figure out this gun. See, I have one photograph to work from for this gun. And uh, I have to translate it into different angles. I kind of have to uh, imagine how it looks from different angles. There we go. Don't you hate it when the lead on the pencil is just those mechanical pencils? That's the only beef is that it when it gets close to running out, it's just like the lead kind of floats around in the edge, so you can't really get the line quality that you used that you used to getting. Now it just feels weird. Hey Becky. I wondered where you were. Uh, yeah, everybody's going to sleep. I'm going to sleep myself. Um, how much time do I got? I set a timer here. I got, we got 19 minutes left. Yeah, intense music. Because I got this uh, intense scene going on. Guy's getting blown up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start earlier streams next time. I just, I kind of promised I would start one after I did this one this morning. I do a second one, so I thought, you know what, I just got to do it, even though I got a late start. Billy. This is Billy's final scene. Nice guns. <laughs>
Oh, the Nighthawk? Yeah, now for some reason my mind's blanked out. Nighthawks, that's the one with Stallone, right? And Billy Dee Williams from the 80s. Rucker Hauer is in it. Cool. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Definitely love that film. Whoops. Am I on screen here? Sorry about that. I gotta keep checking to make sure this drawing is on screen. Okay. See muzzle flash. That's one thing I gotta get. I always look up. I like the muzzle flashes are very important to me. <laughs> I make sure I get those muzzle flashes right. Driven. I can't remember that one. I mean, it's not a driver. Is it a driven? Driven. Let's see. Gun barrels here. Muzzle flashes, and it's more towards us. Muzzle flashes be up here. Some subsequent muzzle flashes here. Hmm, I probably don't need that one. I can add it in later. Stallone film with Burt Reynolds. Oh, yes, yes. I think I know that one. I haven't seen it. I don't think I've seen that one. Maybe I have. It's been a while. I remember the cover of that the movie. The poster, I should say. I gotta give in this, put in the speed lines here. I just put down the base ones. Might have to go upside down. There we go. I like to draw them sequentially, so I have to uh, build off of the one previous.
bunch of women partying. <laughs> Not much driving, huh? Give him a, a little bit of like a 3D readout on his gun here. It's got to have a little bit more of a sci fi, high tech type of feel. I've given him an M60, but I want it to be like, I want that to have a classic look, but more of a modern flair to it. So. See, right here I showed his face. I don't like that redundant. Bum, 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 bum. Ooh. See, he's got his helmet here. I don't like the redundant like face, 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 and then face. I, I gotta break that imagery up. So instead of showing the same type of, I'm gonna do uh, show a close up of his helmet, like really close up here. That's another thing too, I don't like drawing the same size helmets throughout every panel. Like breaking up the size. But then you also have to, it has to be readable to the viewer, the reader. So, what distinguishing marks can I leave, do I have to have for the reader to understand what it is they're seeing, which character it is they're seeing? So, I know that nose piece stands out when it's close up. And, of course, the mouth is going to be in silhouette, so you're basically just going to see teeth. Hello, George. How you doing? Thank you. Thanks for joining us. I got a little chat going. some rough pencils Thanks, George. Now it's 
telling him that. I was saying earlier that I usually go do the layouts on a smaller, smaller book. I keep stuff like this real rough. But when I go to the final page, uh, sometimes I'll end up changing the layout just a little bit when I have an idea of the feeling or mood I want to get from the overall. I concentrate on the storytelling with this when I do these. And once I get that down, I know exactly kind of what's taking place. Then I can kind of jazz it up. So for this one, instead of one panel, I broke it up into four. But it's not very important, so I wanted them to take up the whole entire... And there's no dialogue in this section, so I took up the entire uh, panel. I wanted more emphasis on each guy getting destroyed in a very traumatic way. Just kind of show the power of his gun, technology, which comes in, into play in the story. His technology is a big part of the plot. So I thought the emphasis should be on that. It's a little more iconic looking, but, and a lot of times if I get an idea, I'll just, I'll rough the drawing out really rough. I don't care how good it is. I mean, it's, the structure might be off, but at least I want the mood. If I get the, what I want initially of the mood, then I can refine it later. A little bit of humor with this last panel. Everybody got destroyed except for him, and he's just like I said, videotaping this. So I kind of wanted to break up that violence with a little bit of humor, kind of lighten the. lighten the mood for just a bit. And then, dramatic reveal King Victory. Look, okay, concentrate on these maidens down here.
Oh, there's my alarm. It's the alarm to tell me that it's been an hour. <laughs> Keep trolling or else. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta brush up on my But thanks for stopping by, thank you very much. Keniko oh you I'm trying to guess the language that you're typing. So it's all. Quiero ver el grande. So Spanish. Puedo. <laughs> I can read some of the expressions though. Okay, Spanish. Yeah, I need to practice. I need to practice my Spanish, that's for sure. I started studying it recently.
So where are you, uh, where are you from? If you don't mind me asking, it's a chemical, right? Chemical. We have people from uh, California, Australia, all over the place. <laughs> yeah, which one or which panel I should say oh the one the, the big one oh, okay <laughs> yeah, this is going to be like all shadowed out. So you're basically just going to kind of see some Oh no, <laughs> it's Becky. It's Becky, Becky. <laughs> it's Becky from the block. Hey, Kenny Cole. Uh, yes, it's um, it is in English, but it's manga style. That's what I'm going for, manga style. And you can see the link. You can see some finished pages on the link in the description, Indiegogo. Trying to get your okay there it's on camera. Let's see. Who's Harry Crumb?
Yeah, John Kenny. You know, I didn't show her. Uh... Yeah, I think I told her about it, though. I think. I know I showed Mike. Uh, Kenniko, good pen is rare. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you talking about this one? Yeah, I like this one. It's a... Uh... Pentel. Seven millimeter. Yeah, Japanese. I like the weight of it. It's like heavy. It's a little heavy there. It's nice. It's what you got. Everything you know. Chinese old baby. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's a. Oh yeah, John Candy, man. John Candy, he's still probably one of my top favorite still to this day comedians. Film. I mean, just seeing him in the film, it just when I watch those movies with him in it, it just feels like family, you know? That's how John Candy feels. I still get tears, a little tears in my eyes when I watch uh, Plane Trees on Mobiles, especially the end. Can't help it. Every time I see that ending of that film, man, I get tears well up in my eyes. That smile at the end. I heard that uh, John Hughes really liked uh, John Candy. Obviously put him in a bunch of films, but he would freeze frame on that face where he just smiles because he said that face is just it's like I guess it's, yeah it's the friendliest face he just loved that face of John Candy it's crazy they're both gone now but uh yeah man it's still my favorites it's, it's still got so much life and heart to those films ah better just release this over You want to lose? See, this is where the small eraser, click eraser comes in handy. I can erase without losing the lines I want.
Hey, Humphrey Bear. Hey, Willie Reed, too. Cool. How's it going? Yeah, will I do something? Yeah. Yeah, I should. You know what? I still want, I need to do that. Um, I have all these names that for that contest, for the agenda contest, so I got to address that, definitely. I also want to do something for the 100 subscribers, probably do another giveaway. But I definitely have to do a giveaway for uh, the agenda contest. I haven't forgot about that. I'm going to actually start planning it out. Oh, goodbye, Becky. <coughs> Night. Have a good sleep. Sweet dreams. Yeah, good to see you too, Willie. See what time is it now? Can't even see what time it is. Whoops. Wait. Okay, twelve. It's twelve fifty-five here, and I've already been over the hour. I'm probably an hour, twenty minutes, maybe a little more. Let's see. So I pretty much got. Most of these panels roughed out. Let's see, I'll zoom out a little. Yeah. Got my erasers, all the erasing bits, eraser bits littering my desk. Let's go another hour. Hmm. How late is it over for you guys? Is it because over here where I am, it's about it's almost one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Glad you guys want to watch more. Especially you don't want to end it when everybody's here. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? Oh, it's 4 a.m. over where you are, huh, George? Yeah, I used to just end it. I'll go for a little bit longer. See, I'll put another, uh, put another CD soundtrack. Down the night. See if anyone can guess what it is. p.m. in Australia 1 a.m. okay cool same time time zone as me
because I was trying to get the music sound cued up. I'll just walk back over if I have to. Okay, let's see. Hey, thanks, Willie. Yeah, I finally got to do a reveal on King Victory. The other ones, these are all going to be kind of silhouetted. And, uh, yeah, do some dramatic silhouette lighting on these. Hey George, uh, the Indiegogo page is uh, it's going to be there in demand until like um, I think the middle of February, I believe. I'll have to double check and put yeah. Yep, yeah, tomb. It is Willow. Uh, probably be selling some of these pages definitely um, still thinking of which ones I mean first books could be 48 pages so there'll be a, a lot to choose from and uh, so inks oh you're asking you want to see inks <laughs> Ink stage, you want that to get going already, huh? Yeah, actually, I should probably start inking some of these before I go. I think I'll tackle the uh, the easy one first. I'll tackle this close-up right here. Kind of establish the uh, really heavy black shadows. <laughs> you get the best page. <laughs> okay. Whichever that may be. I guess it's up to the person, right? Look, viewing it. Ah. I gotta get some uh, new ink. This ink is a little old. I don't know how many of you know that ink can go bad. Like, I actually keep my ink in the refrigerator. And I didn't know that. But one, uh, was it Paul Pope? Paul Pope was talking about, you know, ink going bad. And uh, keeping it in the fridge, so that's what I've been doing. Seems to work pretty good. I don't get the clumps in it, but I'll take a little bit out. I keep it in my, uh, I have a big giant bottle in the fridge, and I, I put a little bit in here every time. And this is what I use immediately.
No. I don't, I don't get drunk. I don't drink, actually. Let me wash this out real quick. Wash out my ink. Ink container. These are like, these are actually like little stocky glasses I got at the Japanese store. And yeah, I don't drink, so. So I got another. I use this one sake glass for water. It cost me a buck each. Great drinks. Nice little porcelain uh, dishes. Good night, Becky. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I know, Becky. Yeah, I'm going to be going too. I'm going to go. I'm just going to throw down a little bit of ink before I go. Hmm, let's see, which guy should I do? I think I'm doing this middle panel. I guess I could go for that. You said you like the cross hatching on that, huh? That's just my lines. I just scribbled in <laughs> just to know where the black space is going to be. <coughs> hmm. Sometimes I'm the same way. Right when I throw down some lines, I actually like the way it looks. And I'm like thinking, should I just try to capture that pencil sketchy look? Pen is dried out on me. Do not like that. soundtrack man these older movies I love this the adventure music she's it on screen Good. Back up. 
Okay, good. I think it's back up. I think I lost you for a second. Okay. You know what I also like, I just discovered, was, um, these are the pens I use. The, uh, here we go. So I got my trusty three. And also the Micron PN, which I believe is plastic nib. Yeah, the PN. Okay, cool. We're back. Kicks. Never mind the... Uh, never mind Tomb, he just hung up on a typo I made on Facebook. <laughs> Admittedly, it was a bad typo, but... <laughs> yeah, number three seems to be like a nice, you know, nice size to do like small, small details without getting too small. Like if I'm usually, if I'm using the three, it's because I'm doing more kind of background tech stuff. I usually use the dip pen for um, like the G nib. The Maru for doing like characters and stuff, but <clears throat> doing like backgrounds or like I said tech. I use a uh... <clears throat> definitely use the uh, three. And it looks pretty messy when you see that, you're like, what is he doing?
Uh, yes. You mean the Comic Fest? A uh, tomb? Yeah, I'll be at the Comic Fest in San Diego. I'll be selling some comics. Some doing some original artwork. Like doing sketches and stuff like that. Oops, sorry. Getting it off camera there. Yeah, Comic Fest is, is nice. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Comic Fest or San Diego Comic Fest, but it takes place in, uh, in uh, I believe it's, it's San Diego, but it's, you know, like San Diego's divided into all these little tiny cities, uh, subsections. But uh, it's in the area where um, they have a lot of the Japanese stores and restaurants and stuff and Asian places, but it's not too far from there it's a nice area but the uh, comic fest was created by the original creators of comic-con san diego comic-con so uh it kind of has those humble beginnings feel to it that comic-con did in the 70s which of course i wasn't you know i never been to comic-con until 2000 2001 but yeah it's it's fun i've been there so far at this comic fest i've been i've had a table there signing and sketching for the past I think this is my sixth one sixth convention comic fest I get some good commissions there too it's pretty nice oh which reminds me I owe a commission to a guy man I just totally forgot I owe a commission to somebody <laughs> he's like a regular and uh Man, so I'm gonna have to get working on that. I'll probably do a live video of, of me drawing that for him. Yeah, that's what I'll do. It's two characters with a background, and it's got a police car in it that's halfway submerged in water. Okay, Willie. Yeah, I know. I probably should write one, actually. You know what? I'm going to take that advice to heart. I'm going to write it for myself a quick little memo. I'm going to write on my comic page, so don't forget. Let's see right at the top here. There we go. I don't know if you guys can read that. Yeah, San Diego Comic Con, man. Um, I still go every year to San Diego Comic Con. I get in for free because I have the pro badge. So I take advantage of that living here in San Diego, which is, yes, I'm in San Diego. Um, I take advantage of that. Definitely and go. And uh, I have I like going because I get to see friends, and uh, of course make connections, make some contacts for work even. But lately these days I mostly go to meet up with friends and stuff that from out of state, people from you know other professionals, like just like some of the guys that I work with in this community. I get to meet up with them. Like um, I was talking to um. RT Bear. See if I can try to meet up with him at WonderCon this year. 
him and Mike Miller. And, and uh, hopefully Kyung, too. Kyung, I believe, lives out in LA area, California. So that would be cool. See all those guys. Of course, I already know Mike. I've met him. I've seen him at different shows out here. But it would be the first time I'm meeting Kyung and Art. Yeah, Artsy Bear. <laughs> that's that's a great great way of remembering how to pronounce his name. I used to always say Art Thibbert, but yeah, T Bear sounds so much cooler. Artsy Bear. Yeah, Kung Lee, man. I'd like to meet up with him. Hopefully, he comes to the con. I'm surprised he's never had a table. I mean, he says he goes to cons, but he never had a table, which surprised me. Like, I was getting tables back when I was, like, in high school. Which really kind of helped really light a fire under me. Okay, let's see. Here comes the tricky part now. Oops. part where uh, Willie was talking about should I read these lines he likes those lines I don't know if I can zoom in I can see some of those pencil lines I guess you kind of like those I do like those myself but sometimes you gotta sacrifice those for the greater good Kung. oh yeah Kung's more anime expo yeah I just started going to anime expo in uh, LA so far I've been twice and I've actually been talking with Mikey my brother and colorist of Agenda talking with him about doing an actual getting a table or a booth for um, for uh, Anime Expo I've always been a fan of manga and anime and uh Working in American comics, even French comics, I try to incorporate that style into my professional work, but um, every publisher did not want that. They don't want manga style, they want anything, they didn't want any... So I basically was doing like techniques, manga techniques, like for effects and stuff, but they didn't want the people to look like manga-ish. Which was strange to me because it's so universally accepted now around the world. I mean, everybody likes... And there's so many different types of manga. It's not like everything is just big eyes. Um, yeah, so... But James... James was just like, yeah, go for it. He loves manga and anime. Uh, his best friend uh, was actually the one who brought over manga to the U.S. back in the 80s, 90s. Um... Torn, I think, I believe it's Torn Smith. He did, uh, he worked, was at Studio Proteus, bringing, uh, and, uh, Dark Horse, bringing over a lot of different mangas. Well, even before Dark Horse, he's helped, uh, bring over a lot of the Viz stuff. Yeah, Viz, uh, helped yeah. Helped set up Viz. Yeah. And then he went to Dark Horse. And that was James Hudnall, the writer oh, of Agenda. That was his, like, best friend. Unfortunately, he his friend passed away uh, I think it was like six years ago he said I think it was in this video but yeah man he was instrumental that's basically where I got my manga was uh, you know from that earlier manga reading the, the stuff from the 90s which of course was probably a little older because it came out in the uh, Japan first Let's see now. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do with this black space?
The only way to go back to LA is to harass us. Hey. And you gotta make the trip out. <laughs> It's like, why, why go through all the trouble of harassing us uh, in person when you just do it from the comfort of your own home, <laughs> too? Yeah, you can't block your switch you <laughs> off. <laughs> That's funny is I accidentally I actually Yeah, I don't want to go into that over yeah. It's been going pretty good. I haven't had to block anybody lately on uh Facebook. If you, my Facebook, or the same thing with Twitter, I usually don't. I stay away from uh, any derisive conversation. I stay away from politics. Not that I don't like talking about politics, but... I just don't want to get into it. <laughs> I can get sucked into that. I do ask questions on, because I, I want to know what people think. But people usually, if you make a statement to try to see what they think, instead they accuse you of stuff. Yeah, that's people like that. I'm the just art, trying yeah. to get a read on, on the room, basically. Yeah, it seems like um, thanks to thanks to uh, social media or corporate media in general, uh, what's lost here is having an actual conversation with your fellow man. <laughs> people no longer... They've been brainwashed not to converse and talk with each other. They ran rave at each other, but when you actually want to sit down and, hey, let's have a conversation, you're like, no. It's pretty sad. I mean, that's how civilization, modern civilization, civilized civilization, and society is based off of uh, discussion, discussing ideas, differences of ideas. Oh yeah, yeah, Adam Warren, yeah, I like Adam Warren, he's definitely one of my favorites, um, Mike, my brother Mike, who was talking just a minute ago, he, uh, he got me into his stuff, he was showing me his older stuff, the black and white, dirty pair of comics, those are awesome, and of course I got into the dirty pair of the colored series, um, in the early 2000s was my first and the bubblegum crisis um, I love that book oh no worries too <laughs> I don't mind the political discussion uh, and even some little bit of back and forth and it gets a little rough I mean I've done that myself with some people and I usually try to like get out of that before it does turn to that but uh, on Twitter, I hear Twitter's pretty... I did on Facebook mostly, but I hear Twitter it gets pretty nasty, so I kind of stay out of it. Cause I think there's a wider audience on Twitter because people can see your um, comments. So random strangers will like, jump on, I think, and uh, reply. And my Facebook is more towards friends. So uh, usually people need arguments with me might be people I know. I don't want to just argue to argue. So I want one actually to share my thoughts, my position, or point of view. But some people can't handle it. Get really worked up and angry. Oops, sorry, it's off screen there.
see Willie, if you can kind of tell him when I lay down the black, sometimes if I feel the same way like you were mentioning, I, if I kind of like that line look, I'll go in, kind of lay down those lines first, like so. And then if I don't like it, I just always go back over it. Just fill it in. If I go over lines that I don't want to or outside of lines, I don't really think that bother me because I know I can always fix it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw actually, uh, it's funny that you say that. I did see when I was posting up the link to the uh on my twitter for this video i saw the comment uh, john malin commented and then i saw your comment which hey man i agree it's like ridiculous how like, how some of these people it's like they're detached from reality they're like i'm not for violence against kids but this kid should be like beat up <laughs> it's like i guess really you are for violence towards kids Which is funny because the same people were like saying how we need to protect the children like at those school shootings. But I guess it depends if you like the kid or not. And you're just like open season <laughs> on kids you don't like. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. Um, the the composer of this soundtrack, though, is, um, what's his name? James Horner. And James Horner, he's the guy, the soundtrack for Aliens, the second Alien movie with James Cameron. He also did Di Titanic. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's violence, you know, happening with all of this stuff, but I believe it's just, uh, we're in a time where it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit rough, but it'll like start to, uh, level out before we know it. Right now it's just, we're fighting against, people are fighting against change of, it's a cultural battle and they're fighting against, you know, they want things to be a certain way, and the majority of people don't want it to be that way, and they're trying to uh, socially engineer, people don't like it, the social engineering. I know I don't like it. I think it's like I don't like being told what to do. Maybe it's the American, uh, the American, uh, spirit. <laughs> we didn't like England telling us what to do. Broke away from that. And then we got people coming into power or in through media trying to tell us 
what we should like, what we shouldn't like, how we should talk. And the American uh, attitude is just like, you know, screw you. Live a life the way I want to live it. Yeah, James Horner, man. Yeah, he passed away. I think, was it a year, two years ago, maybe? Maybe a little more? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, yeah, what they don't realize is... They don't realize is what they're doing is they're alienating the next generation. Like when they're attacking this kid for wearing uh, that MAGA hat. These guys, these kids are high schoolers they're going to be the next generation of voters in 2012 20 a lot of them so you could they're kind of cementing their own uh, opposition to creating it because these younger guys they see what's going on they don't like it and they might have been you know someone might be more lighthearted into this stuff but being treated a certain way and the whole establishment coming down on them like that probably really lights a fire under them and says hey man <laughs> I'm sick of that I'm not taking up you know putting up with this stuff I mean it becomes more real to them that struggle or when they see that oppressive type of domineering uh, attitudes coming down on them and lying about them and as we've found out People are starting out to trust. Uh, it's funny that all this cries of fake news is they just basically just, you know, basically are just uh, reassuring everybody that it's true. So even as much as what I said now people get ticked off some people I know just even talking as little I'm talking um, some some generalities and they still get ticked off which is why I'm like that's brainwashed man you should be able to communicate and just talk you know put your opposing views out there discuss and these people are trained to be like no discussion is not prohibited our discussion is not uh, allowed it's prohibited don't don't converse with these people who think differently than you. Like, well, that's how you uh, reach conclusions and solve problems. Dialogue, man. <laughs> I hit a pink MAGA hat. Yeah, no, it's, think about it. I mean, think about how crazy it is. People are attacking teenagers for supporting, and these are Americans attacking other Americans for supporting the president of America. <laughs> think how crazy that is, you know? I mean, you've never seen that with the uh, last president. Sure, I mean, you've seen people you know, disagree and get in arguments and they didn't like the last president, but they weren't physically attacking people who supported the last president. It's just crazy. I think that's what turns a lot of people off. Um, because they themselves were not, like, if they weren't political, they are almost apolitical. And now when they see this happening, it's basically I said it turns them off and it turns them on to the opposition of what the guy they're trying to demonize is the guy that they're pushing them towards
Hey, Mighty Geek Studios. Yeah, man. Generation X and Z, they're resisting, man. I mean, totally. I mean, that's the keep you hearing that term, resist. And it's not going the way they think it is. <laughs> these people are seeing through it. I mean, these are a different generation. They know what's going on. They're pretty savvy with the um, how social media and everything goes. I mean, there's a lot of the older generation kind of, you know, they have trust more on the uh, news media. They kind of grew up with that, you know. And these new guys see what's going on, and they're savvy with the tech and and how things work. And they're just, yeah, they're not buying into it. And that's why you see a lot of anger. Yeah, things are turning, man. I mean, like I said, it looks ugly now but I believe it's gonna get better it might get uglier before it gets better but it's gonna get better in the US and because it's not just happening in the US it's happening all over the world I mean I see it happening in Europe like different movements like they had that president in Spain got elected in France um, no it was in Spain I think it was, it was Brazil sorry Brazil hmm I feel like still go back. I kind of like how it looks a little bit. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's, it gets ugly out there, man. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, someone pointed out to, um, they were at a women's march, or women's, yeah, I think it was women's rights march or whatever, and he was asking them questions, and uh, this lady was saying, well, yeah, if you as a man put this wig on and, and a little dress and walk down the street, you know, she's like, let's see how much you get harassed. And then he said, well, what if I put like a MAGA hat on, walk down the street, how, what do you think would happen to me then? Who would get more harassed, a guy wearing a little blonde wig and a dress, or a man wearing a MAGA hat? And she really couldn't, uh, <laughs> she knew, you can tell she knew what would happen, that guy would get crappy out of him. And, uh, but they don't want to admit it, but they know. And that's just, to me, that is strange, man. I mean, you're an American, an American president and then you're gonna be attacked for that or you're in danger your life could be in danger for wearing a shirt or a hat and that that's called brainwashing man big brother level brainwashing like if you turn on your friends and family longtime friends and family just because some corporate media guy is telling you to hate somebody then you've been brainwashed. You can have legitimate disagreements and legitimate uh, opposing views, but once you start like hating people in your own family and and you know giving up a lifelong lifelong uh, relationship of understanding, like getting to know these people, and then you buy into some stranger on the news telling you that your family are bigots and hateful. Man, that's totally brainwashing. I've had that happen. I've had friends, childhood friends even, like turn on me. I had to block them on Facebook because uh, they got pretty vicious. That kind of shocked me because I've seen other people, like other people had testaments of like, yeah, man, my friends like totally turned on me. And uh, I never experienced that. I mean, I had people don't agree with me, but 
the first time that people were just were like cursing me out and these are people who I never had any conflict with ever and I always got along with them and um it was crazy I was just like what and you couldn't even talk to them I mean you couldn't even say one word and they were like every word you said was like hate to them like you say hello good day they're like no screw you it's not a good day <laughs> and I was just like man I just had to block them because I'm like I don't want them clouding up my day plus they have good memories of them and I don't want to have this current craziness like taint that they're in another state Oh, sorry, I'm off camera again with this. Getting carried away. Oh, wow. A friend of 18 years. Yeah, George, that's crazy. Blocked you. Yeah, man. It's brainwashing. I mean, like I said, if they, they don't even want to talk to you, it's a friend who knows you, and just find out, hey, where are you located at? Like, you know, they just, that's brainwashing, man. I've never, I have friends and family who think totally opposite of me when it comes to politics, and I would never, you know, treat them horrible or block or unfriend them because they think differently than me. It's just ludicrous. Like I said, just brainwashing, man. And I try to tell people, like, I try to, like, just they don't even want to talk. But that's what gets me, man. Is I like to talk, as you can tell. Friends who lead you over were never really your friends. Yeah, I know. You know, it. It kind of it's like a litmus test. This whole thing. Um, to me, it's kind of a litmus test, too. I mean, to see who is really crazy, who is, like, more susceptible to being brainwashed. It's like, like I said, I can see if you don't agree with the current president, you don't agree with him. That's totally understandable. Uh, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't understand that you have political disagreements because you have a different view of things, different worldview, but just going to rant and rave and be like with so much anger and vitriol it's like something's wrong with her man because there's no reason <laughs> like I said I wasn't a big fan of the last president but I wouldn't go into like a seething you know drooling rant uh, conniption like over him I was like yeah don't agree with him I think he's doing some things I don't agree with and uh, making some bad decisions but yeah, I didn't lose my crap. <laughs> he beat the system too. He just don't have any friends. <laughs> Problem solved. Oh, that's funny. See Mighty Geek, and they will say that's where that we're keeping the uh, the best equipment for ourselves. George Peter, oh yeah, his avatar is like a lighter color, I think. We can disagree with anyone. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, man. I mean, if you don't really want to see who your real friends are, man, it takes guts, but you just start talking about politics, man. You just you see where your friendship, how deep your friendship runs. Because, like I said, man, I can understand disagreement, but to blow up at somebody. Like, I've seen friends, like my family, who are really sweet-natured and loving, kind. They never raise their voice the whole time I was a kid and never raised their voice and they have like friends just go off on them like 
like they were like the most vile human being. I'm like, wow, you really are a sack of garbage, man. <laughs> like this is the most sweet, like a sweet little old lady, and you're going off on them because you don't like one guy. And like they can't see how brainwashed they are, man. It's yeah, it just it gets me. Because I'm not apolitical, but I try to talk in generalities and concepts when I'm talking to people who I know are pretty pretty oppositional to my point of view. So I try to find some common ground, but man, there is, it's all or nothing with them. It's like, and being in California, I'm careful when I talk in public, I'm, I keep things pretty general. <laughs> And sometimes I've kept it general where I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep it pretty general and I could be specific about things, but just try to find some common ground. And man, people still would lose it. It's like crazy. And I was like, wow, really? That set you off? That set you off nuts? Let's see. <laughs> Undercover, his avatar is caught in a snowstorm, total whiteout. <laughs> you using your real name, yeah. Yeah, man, it is crazy how. Like I said, I, I try to talk in generalities, and man, it does not matter. But what's funny is there's people who are um, who lean left of center, and they're like they're siding up with like Trump people because they don't like people telling them what to do, man. And they they have left leaning views, but these far far left people, if you don't like lockstep with every single view man they will turn on you and uh these some of these guys who are are classic liberals they're just like not having it these and these younger guys too are just they don't want to be told what to do man they don't want to tell be told what kind of comics to read what's acceptable what's not acceptable what kind of games to play and uh yeah so they're making enemies from their own corner it's not just the uh, Right. Okay, I think that's pretty much done. Not that little silhouette I kind of got carried away. Meaning I usually just kind of rough in the blacks because I don't... I think I'm just going to put that all black in there for his chin. I don't really need to see his chin. It, it's blacked out in that helmet. Shadow. To show his teeth. So that gritting teeth, man, that guy's all teeth. It's funny, is is like generic is some of the stuff I like I said I don't use, you know, a lot of terms, terminologies. Probably still people get ticked off from me even talking when I'm talking, but it's like, so what, man? Like I said, I, I'm cool with people having a different opinion, different stance, and they have a different passion. That's cool. You know, and we can agree to disagree. It's just I don't get the whole vitriol thing. I'm gonna use my Maru nib. Yeah, it's true. Pollux doesn't belong in every discussion.
Hey, thanks, Willie. Oh, the draw? Yeah. You know what? Um, I'm just going to plan it out tomorrow. And um, hopefully I can put up a video tomorrow. i got to get gather all the names of all the people that I... Uh, whose names I've drawn from that. Who entered the competition contest, as you see. <laughs> Yo, Willie. Yeah, I like that show, man. Elf. You ever seen the animated uh, Elf cartoon? That was, man, I love the animation that. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you know, I like using the... I was kind of the same way at first. I was kind of like... Oh man, the nibs, you have to keep dipping them. But uh, what I like about them is that they don't dry out on me. Like every time I use the pens, like the tech pen, like I used to keep the, the um, what was it, the Copic the multi liners. And uh, man, I kept changing the nibs on the pens, I kept changing the ink cartridges, could not get it to work. Like it, every time I went down on the paper and just put the line down, it was just. Yeah, it would not stay. It just would not stick to the paper. It was like dry, dried out every time.
And I like how small the tips are on these, like, like the uh, Maru nibs. Man, they're so small. You can just get really nice thin lines with these if you need to. Which I do like for this background character. Oh yeah, Garbage Pail Kids cards, yeah. I actually seen some at our local comic store, they had them on. Different series available. Yeah, something, I like those cards, man, the illustrations and those. John Pound. John Pound, my brother Mikey's dropping the name of the, the artist. He did a lot of Howard the Duck covers. Oh, okay. For the magazine. Oh, yeah. Howard the, yeah, I can see the style. Howard the Duck. The Irish Bill Kids card. He, he's in dispute with Art Spiegel. Then uh, the guy that uh, did the book series Moths. Uh, they're in dispute over who created the Irish Bill Kids. He's like, well, I drew everything. And, and well, Art Spiegelman's like, well, I looked at you were drawing of a kid in a garbage pill that looked like uh, a doll and I said that's a garbage pill kid and he's like no I already said that was my version of cabbage pet and he's like no so they, they have a whole thing but I, I guess they're not friends anymore at least that's what I read in a book that's sad but I don't know why they care because neither of them own it so it's, it's tops, right? It's, yeah, it's bragging rights to something that you don't own. All you have to do is say who drew it, and you the, all the art for most of the cards, and you're like, oh, John Pound. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was reading some of these comments. It says, um, yeah, that's my colorist. That's my colorist and brother, Mikey, talking. He's where I get a lot of my info on comics. I have a problem where I read a lot of comics and I remember names of things that will never do me any good. No, it does good because it helps me find back issues of things I want. They have a unique art style that will stick yeah, Mike, uh, it's Mikey, the colorist on the agenda. They got a bunch of uh, people in here, got nine people. Anjun. Anjun? I think that's how you pronounce it, Anjun. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, Mike's coloring some agenda pages right now. While I'm drawing them, he's coloring. too cheap uh, when I got a new computer it was like my old version wouldn't work and I had given away another version that was a little more modern that would have without thinking and uh, so I ended up just buying it uh, with a manga studio and 
which is now a clip art studio. And I actually like that. It's cheap, it's effective. Yeah, see, I got another nib. This one is the, uh, this is the Maru nib. See, it's like round. Maru means round Japanese. Just to, hopefully we'll be able to tell you that. Um, I got, this is a G nib, which is, gets more of a, like, thick, thin line. And this is the one I usually ink with. And I'll do a little inking with it right now. I'll just zoom in, it's really close as I can get. Kelbonga, dude. <laughs> um, Mikey, Mike doesn't have a channel right now, but uh, we have a Kassen Brothers, a Q-Makers site that we haven't really attended to lately, but um, he's going to get something going. Because we want to kind of have a joint um, joint thing going together. We want to kind of start doing some streaming together. Yeah, just I'm trying to get too many things done right now. So he'll, he'll appear, if you know, online in the background. Or, but we do want to get something going where he can, you can see him coloring and kind of switch back and forth. We'll probably do that because uh, he's got the computer he could do share screen and people could see him color that'd be actually cool wouldn't it yeah Drawing in the kitchen. Split screen. Is that because you're hungry right now? Is that why you're thinking? Yeah, that? we we only have one meal today. Really... Well, I'm gonna be ending the stream in a little bit because at least I think someone wanted to see some inking. So. Oh, you know, I've seen someone do that before. They had a lighter, put it on the the nib. I don't know, I guess softened, softened up the metal a little bit. And they do it right before the ink? Yeah, yeah, they do it right before the ink. Huh. To let the, uh, to melt the dried ink. You know, I don't know. Usually, um, what I do is I have paper towel handy, and I keep that, and then I have like a little bit of water in, in my little uh, sake glass here, and I actually pour a little bit in, and then I just dip it in there and just wipe the ink off before it dries, 
I mean, it's kind of dry, but before it gets, you know, turns to a hard crust, I just kind of do that, kind of wipe it off paper towel. You have to do that every so often because in the middle of inking, it gets dried and it starts gunking up and your lines become all, your lines become all like, just blotted, bleeding. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, man. It was nice that you guys all stopped by and uh, watch and discuss. So does everybody here have their own channels then? Um, yeah, I mean, they have their own channels, but they... And some of them have... Uh, yeah, do you guys have... Uh, you guys have regular streaming yourself? You do any streaming or any videos? I'm just looking right now at uh, Willie Reed has a Super Dave Osborne Twitter. Ah, they have a coating of oil on them. I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, so George Peter, Peter has a channel. Mighty Geek Studios, of course. And zoom out a little bit. Yeah, the rest of these panels go pretty quick. I kind of have a stronger idea. I, once I tackle, sometimes I tackle the panel that I'm a little iffy on. Once I tackle that one, I feel like, yeah, I have a better idea now with the rest, the direction for the rest of the panels. You're a cam boy. Oh, 50 street. Yeah, see, I don't know how many, I think I got 90 people subscribing to mine now. And when I first started doing these, uh, Mike Miller was telling me I should start doing some videos. And so I started doing it when we started the campaign for Agenda. And I only at the time had 34 subscribers. So it went up to 90 in the past month, maybe two months. But I need to really set a schedule and to have some actual time slots uh, so people can actually expect to come and view what, what's being put up. <laughs> you don't hang out on your channel and George tries. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. He does, uh, di like, uh, that old TV show, was it Dinner in a Movie? He does Drawing in a Movie. Oh, uh, George? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Made me think of one of those little, I cooked, uh, the son of my mom, watching the, his, uh, cable show called Dinner in a Movie. And I still remember that. Cooked, uh, steak, tar, tar, watching the Lost Boys with my mom. Yeah, I remember that show. They would tell you the ingredients they're gonna cook, and so you get your ingredients the next week, and you know you could watch a movie, and in between they would cook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And tell you how to cook a cool meal. So in the summer, you know, he used to cook as a kid. Well, thanks, Anjun. Thanks. Uh, definitely like to get to a hundred. Uh, hopefully, I don't know how long it takes to do that. Maybe another week. Too. If you kind of just share the link, uh, get the word out if you feel so inclined. And uh, like Twitter, Facebook. Uh, once I hit 100, I'll receive a welcome to the club email. Oh, really? 
Okay. And is that when they get like more strict on you for like, um, like copyright stuff, like music and everything? Cause I noticed I was on a stream with, uh, Mike and, um, RT bear and, um, John Malin and, uh, the video got kicked from YouTube because he was playing some Beethoven, I think, or Bach. Yeah, I definitely got advertised. I always, I try to push my video uh, YouTube channel. Um, that's that's how I actually got up to the ninety subscribers. Is like doing, like, uh, you know, different some of those guys channel like uh, Mike Miller and Malin and and also I do like cross comics and uh, Chester Bubs. I'm trying to see if I pronounce it right, Bubsy. And uh, Good Dog Press, and a lot of those guys that go on theirs. And uh, yeah, I like those guys, the fun guys, man, going on there. And then, any of you guys have any channels? If you want any guests, I'll definitely come on yours. Just let me know when you uh, do the streaming. I'll set this time time aside. A lot of times I'll do like a drawing, like when I'm actually on someone's channel. Doing a live stream, I'll do some drawing while they're at talking to me. And they don't seem to mind. I think they like it. It's a little more content for the channel, maybe. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Humphrey Bear Bach. You would think, man. But it's like, uh, I went to his channel and it was like saying, like, you know, copyright. If this, chan this uh, video was removed... And I was like, what? That was a pretty fun one that night too, man. That's what I was talking with uh, R.T. Bear even after the stream, but it was fun. And I actually got a page finished too while I was on there. Man, yeah, really cool guys. But yeah, man, uh, if you guys could, um, I'm going to be ending the stream because uh, it's already pretty late. But yeah, if you just don't forget to like the video, and if you feel inclined, like I said, to share it, I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. It was good talking to you guys. That's one thing I like is uh, being an artist. You're working at home, man. It's like being able to reach out to uh, people and uh, communicate and get feedback. It's nice. Because uh, like I said, you're usually at home alone, just drawing away in your own little world. So it's kind of a nice experience. Oh yeah, George has a suggestion. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. So go to Creator on uh, the YouTube channel, pull out a bunch of music. Cool. Yeah, Artie Bear. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice guy. He's a really good guy. Yeah, technology man. Thanks, George. Yeah, it's funny. I actually used a few of their songs, or I should say a few of their music tracks for a couple of videos, like like only like a minute, two minute long videos. And uh, yeah, it's nice, man. You could adjust the sound and everything. I'll have to do that, and uh, we'll try to. I'll try to get Mike in on the, um, on a, on a stream. That way, uh, yeah, we can put our um, put Mike's uh, sh share screen up on. You can see some of the coloring and everything. <laughs> You're a cam boy, <laughs> Doom. Yeah, I don't know, man. Are you sure you don't have Tomb? Are you sure you don't have some, you know, private cooking channel that we don't know about? You're under some uh, a different moniker. Do some gourmet cooking with chili, <laughs> Wait, what is garlic it? potatoes. 
That's what I mean. He said, he's like, I'm not really a cam boy. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, thanks guys, man. I'll, uh, I'm going to end the stream in a minute. Just want to thank everybody again uh, for stopping by and chatting, man. It's been great. Uh, it's really fun. I actually enjoy it a lot because I'm getting work done and able to uh, have some outside communication with people who have like passions. And uh, yeah, man, I'll let you guys say goodbye to each other before I turn it off. I know there's a little bit of a delay. Night, engine, night tomb. Yeah, night, guys. Night tomb. Night, everyone. Night, engine, George. And uh, is it Humphrey Bear? If he's still there. There he is. Humphrey Bear. Yeah, see you guys. Mighty is at uh, Geek Studios. If you're still there, good night to you. Yeah, guys, good crew. Yeah, thanks, Rodwell Stevens. Yes, thanks for stopping by, man. You guys are great. Have a good night, and I'll, I'm going to work on that contest update. I'm going to work on that tomorrow, and uh, I'll do another live stream. Um, if I'm not on Drawn and Quarter tomorrow, we'll see. Sometimes Mike like contacts me last minute. I'm kind of like, I think I'm on the second uh, tier roster because <laughs> you got all the big guy, bigger guys on there, but sometimes we'll like, throw a last minute call my way. But if not, I'll do a live stream. Uh, maybe before and earlier in the day. So, yeah, good night, guys. Take care. Have a good night. <laughs> I'll zoom out a little bit. The final page will be finished tomorrow. See you guys.